I'm Dan Ring, and welcome to the third tutorial on Nuke's new planar tracker. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you might do some rig removal using planar tracking and a background plate. I'll also show you how to use additional track layers to create holdouts for tracks. In this shot, we have a camera dolly track in the frame that we'd like to remove. We also have a clean plate of the floor that a kind artist has drawn for us. What we're going to do here is simply track the floor and move our clean plate along with the track. So let's do that now. Instead of using the node menu to create a new planar track, we're going to start with a roto node and draw the shape of the area that we want to track. Here I'm drawing as much of the floor as I can and just a tiny bit extra. Then to create a track from within the roto node, we simply right click the shape and click planar track this shape. This sets up a planar track layer in the Roto Curves panel and an associated planar tracker node. I'm going to rename the layer Floor. Now remember in the previous tutorial I mentioned the concept of a reference frame. Internally the transforms at all other frames are calculated relative to the reference frame. So when you're at the reference frame there is essentially no transform being applied. I know that our clean plate was drawn for frame 3A2. So when we've done our track, we don't want any transform to be applied at frame 3A2. This means I want 3A2 to be my reference frame, and we do this by starting our track at frame 3A2. This also means our roto shape needs to have been drawn at frame 3A2, which I've already made sure to do so. Sometimes it happens that you might need to change your reference frame. For example, if an artist drew a roto or made a clean plate for a frame other than your reference frame. In this case, you could simply go to the new frame and click the set reference frame button. We're nearly ready to track, but first we're going to set up our export node so we can see the results as we're tracking. As we don't want any transform on the reference frame, and we don't want to place our clean plates inside the planar surface, we can select the corner pin relative. To see our composite, we connect its input up to our clean plate, and we merge it with our original shot. Now let's start the track, again beginning at frame 3A2 and tracking to the beginning of the shot. Uh oh, I've just remembered something that will probably affect the track, so I'm going to stop it and go back to our original footage. If we turn on the display tracks button, we can see why. If you look at the logo, you can see a lot of features are being tracked here and are biasing the track. To solve this, we need to hold this logo out from the shot. Ordinarily in Rotoland, we could simply paint a couple of mask shapes over our first shape. However, the planar tracker system has its own way of creating holdouts. Start by drawing a shape to mask out the logo, being careful to draw it inside the root layer. Now we add it to its own track layer by selecting it, right clicking and choosing planar track this shape. I'm going to rename this layer holdout. We could also add more shapes to this layer if we wanted to hold out more things in the shot. It's important to know that planar track layers interact with other track layers, and the way they work is that each track layer will hold out the track layers below it. So because our holdout layer is on top, our holdout shape will mask out the logo from the floor shape beneath it. Another nice thing about this is that if the logo were moving, say, we could simply track it first because it's in a tracking layer. As it's not moving, we don't need to do anything else with this track layer. 
Instead, we'll go back to our floor track. We'll go to our reference frame. We'll clear out all the track data. And we'll retrack. I'm going to speed up the recording to save time. This is now tracking much better in the middle of the shot, but if we look at the beginning, there seems to be something funny happening. Let's look at the planar surface to see what's going on. If we scrub through the shot, you can see that the surface has turned red for those strange frames. It's also gone a bit wild here in the viewer. This means that the transform at this point is extreme compared to the reference frame. This usually happens on these sorts of shots where the camera is moving into the scene. Thankfully, this is easy to fix. All we need to do is go to our reference frame and adjust our planar surface. Here I'm reining in the surface, which tells Planar Tracker to care only about the transform relative to the floor, and not the entire scene. This doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be on the floor somewhere. As soon as we've done that, our track should look much better. So you can see now, that funny transform has gone away. Let's now close these property panels to get a better view. Now, this track is starting to look a lot better. Just apart from this logo here sneaking in. Let's put this track on a loop so we can see exactly what's happening. That track looks very nice and is sticking very tightly to the ground. And that concludes our second Planner Tracker tutorial.